In church, sometimes you hear people refer to liturgical colours. Um, and I'm just going to unpack what those are about and take you through uh, the liturgical colours. First of all, the word liturgical refers, refers to things to do with the liturgy. That is the public acts of worship celebrated in the church. And normally we're thinking about the Eucharist, liturgical. Liturgical colours, well, you may have seen them in action, not really clocked them and not known what the significance was. Um, so if you're watching the whole series of videos for this month of the Eucharist, you'll notice that when I was preparing and going through what the different robes were that a priest wears, I was wearing red. Then in the next um, video after this one, I'll be wearing green. Um, that's just because I was wearing a different colour. But what I'm going to do now is go through the four principal colours, liturgical colours, the, the main, uh, what we might call Western Christian uh, liturgical colours. So the one that you would see most often is the colour green. And green is used in what's known as ordinary time, which are those chunks of the year after Trinity Sunday, so we're now in that time as I speak, after Trinity Sunday, all the way up to Advent. And then again, after Epiphany or after Candlemas, up until the beginning of Lent. Why green? Green is a colour of growth, a colour of vitality and life. And that's why we use green during ordinary time, a time in which we grow. The other colour we see a lot is um, white, or it could be gold sometimes. And white and or gold is used for times of celebration. So Christmas, Epiphany, Easter tide, you will see white vestments being worn. Um, gold would tend to be reserved for the really big days, Christmas Day itself, uh, the day of Epiphany, Easter Day itself, and also for the celebrations of particular saints. So white is the default colour for the celebration of any saint, like uh, Mary, um, like um, all sorts of saints we could name. However, some saints might be martyrs, someone like St Stephen, St Alban, and they would be represented when we wear red. The red of a martyr represents the red of the shedding of the martyr's blood. And that connects too with the fact that during Holy Week, uh, the week where, before Easter where we remember that Jesus suffered and died for us and shed his blood for us on the cross. We wear red um, for those days, except for Maundy Thursday, um, red. But also red is a colour of the Holy Spirit. Um, and so on the day of Pentecost, red is the colour we wear, speaking of the flames and fire of the Holy Spirit. The other um, colour that we would use is purple. Purple gets used in Advent and in Lent. It's a far more sober, sombre colour and it indicates to us that we're in a time of reflection and penitence. That's very true of Lent, of course, but in Advent there's also the twist that purple um, is associated with royalty and the coming King, Jesus Christ, the humble King who comes to us. Now there is, um, both in Advent and in Lent, uh, a refreshment day. In um, Advent it's known as Gaudete Sunday, Rejoice Sunday, and in Lent it's known as Refreshment Sunday, and also coincides with Mothering Sunday. And the colour um, used there is the colour rose, so a softening of the purple um, and a hint of the light that is to come. 
Those then are the principal liturgical colours. There's a lot more detail I could go into and if you want to know more about that I'm very happy to talk more about it.